Hello, thank you for sitting here. We have a very interesting conversation. And right before we begin, I just want to ask you, what did we just see on screen? What was that we were looking at? Uh, so what we have just seen is the simulator we built at uh, Civilia, and it's called SimCity. And in the simulator, we are recreating different environments and trying to put uh, virtual sensors there to record the data uh, in, in a more, more uh, autonomous way. Oh, interesting. So speaking of autonomous, this leads us into AI. And I know if you guys have walked around CS at all, AI is everywhere. There's AI TVs, AI probably lawnmowers, everything. And you guys are utilizing AI, but how do you define AI? So yeah, like the, the whole topic of AI, it has already started in a way, and uh, we could define it as it, it's already changing the way we are interacting with the real world. Uh, let's think about searching for data, for example, or planning uh, cheap travel from point A to B. If you were to ever try to kind of uh, do it by yourself, like analyze like thousands of different connections, it would take you probably an hours. And by using AI, it can be just a matter of a few seconds to have the, the, the instant result. Um, different, um, different examples, uh, for example, in medical, uh, medical uh, topics, uh, if you have like medical experts analyzing different uh, photos of, of cells, of human cells, trying to uh, assess if, if there is any like cancer probability, uh, actually, you know, if you are using AI, you can do it much better than, than uh, by doing it by themselves. So they are using AI to actually accelerate and make, it, make the results better. And while we are in the topic of AI, actually, it's good to mention the whole topic of computer vision, which allows machines to actually understand the world around. And it is done by using a combination of different sensors, like, for example, RGB cameras, thermal cameras, LiDAR devices. And we do all that to better be able to map what is going on around. Where are the people? Where are the trees? And this allows us to build intelligence into, into the uh, solutions we are creating. So you're, you're training these machines to learn, basically teaching them yeah. what things look like, how things operate. So AI is more of an assistant. It's there to assist. As you said, it's to speed things up, accelerate yeah. certain fields. So with that in mind, how do you, what you're doing at CVIDIA, how do you create an AI product? Yeah, so if you were to create any good product, like you have to come up with a good team, of course. Uh, but other things that are important in terms of AI, it's like a huge data set of the actual data. And you, you know that, you know, creating huge data sets takes you a lot of time and takes you like a lot of money to create and can also be dangerous to uh, people and equipment involved into that or even like the animal life. So let's, let's give an example of like small Lucy playing on the playground and you know suddenly the, the ball co co goes out of control and it uh, enters the road and the Lucy is running just behind the ball and you know the whole scene is approached by, by a lot of different cars. And for AI algorithms to really work uh, perfectly in those kind of scenarios, they need actually thousands of those kind of uh, circumstances. Also, adding to that, they need a lot of different times of days, like the same scene during the morning, during the afternoon, during the evening, or with different weather conditions, like the fog conditions or like raining. So if you add all that to the, to the mixture, it gives you like few thousands of billions of hours actually of material that needs to be uh, recorded. And it needs to be recorded with different sensors, again, like RGB camera, thermal, um, LiDAR devices. So this, this gives you the, the whole idea of how much data the AI actually needs to operate properly in different uh, situations. So that's what you're talking about is like a challenge of collecting data, especially collecting data in the real world. There's all yeah. these different factors that come into play and it can be a little bit dangerous. Lucy could be injured. Poor Lucy, she's yeah. a lovely young lady. So then what are you guys doing at Cividia to accelerate this process of AI? Yeah, so at Cividia, we first uh, try to define the problem that the, the, the companies try to solve. And when we know the problem, we kind of try helping them create the data sets. And when the data sets are generated, the, we are able to um, help them create the products that really work. So we recreate environments like, for example, uh, malls or cityscapes or rural environments, and we give them ability to actually place sensors, uh, again, like RGB cameras, thermal cameras, on the uh, machines. And we actually allow them to operate those machines in those worlds 
so that they can record the data and they can improve the whole mapping of the environment. Interesting, and I love you said machines because I want to talk about machines. So let's, what's the machine that's right around the corner there? A car. And with these cars, they're becoming autonomous. They have these, I guess the term is ADOS. So what does ADOS stand for and what are the challenges with creating an ADOS? So the ADAS terms is like advanced driving assistance uh, systems. And what, they, what does it mean is like building systems that are more intelligent than the simple ones. So, um, you know, like 33,000 Americans actually die in car accidents and it's due to like 90% of that is due to human error. Like imagine how the world could look like if uh, this thing was a thing of the past, if, if drunk drivers were not existent anymore. Uh, and like, if you would be walking on the street, for example, it would be like a safe environment for you. How, how this would change the whole world. And at Civedia, we try to accelerate also building a, of ADAS products by, again, recreating those environments uh, and, and being given the ability to place sensors. And one interesting thing to mention about what we do is like the all data that we generate in the SynCity it's already pre-annotated, so you know where is, where is each person, where is each car, where is the tree, or where, where are the buildings on the, on the scenes. And this allows those machines to better understand what is going on around. And then, let's stay on these machines for a second. There are certain factors that play into it. You need sensors on the cars, and one of them, again, the one that we have around the corner is thermal. So what role does thermal play when it comes into creating these systems? Yeah, so there are some circumstances where some sensors fail. Like for example, let's let's think of a fog environment. If you if you place the RGB sensor and try to drive through the foggy area, you would probably not see anything on the RGB camera. And this gives a problem that if there is any person in front of the car, you would not see it. Like the, the camera would not the, the sensor, the, the whole system would not see the person. And if you add to the equation the thermal cameras, for example, they are able to see that. A different example, if, if the car uh, goes in front of the sun and there is a glare on the, on the sensor, on the RGB sensor, if you, if you have the same uh, kind of scenario with the thermal, you are able to see things, actually. Okay, so actually it's really curious, because thermal can see things that we can't. So I'm just, this is a question that I just want to ask you because I'm interested. When you're creating this in Sin City, in your synthetic simulated city, how do you factor in like a FLIR thermal camera into that? Is that just a line of code that you add in? So um, the whole sensor setup uh, is, is a separate thing we have in our simulator, but it really comes down to one line of code, uh, actually. Or we have other ways of placing those sensors. You can just drag and drop the sensor and position it in the, in the world or on the machine. And then when you're driving it with the steering wheel or with the joystick, for example, it's generating the, the data, the simulated data there. So we've talked about smart cars, these ADOS vehicles. But what about cities? I think the term that I always hear is smart cities. What is a smart city? How are you involved in creating that? What does that look like? Yeah, so, so the whole term of smart cities, it, it, it became very important lately uh, because like uh, a lot of people kind of move to the city type environments. And in, in, in the whole United States, it's like 63% of people actually live on just 3.5% of the land. So this statistic tells us how important this, this thing becomes. And you know, there, there comes different problems like pollution problem, traffic problem, or crime problem. And cities need to kind of uh, solve those. And that's where the term smart cities comes. So let's think of an example, like uh, we, we were working with one company that was kind of mapping the, the traffic flow on, on intersections, and they had this problem where the car was approaching the intersection, and suddenly it was disappearing. After some time, it appeared again, and it disappeared, and they were trying to investigate what's going on with our data, why is it not working, why our algorithms are producing so, so difficult data, different data. And what they realized is sometimes the cars were occluded by other cars, or sometimes cars were in the shadowy area. And because they were using RGB uh, sensors, they could not cope with this problem. So what they, what they asked us to do is to recreate those kind of environments and place the virtual sensors and try to, try to solve this problem. And that, that's what actually they were able to do. That's awesome. So with smart cities, it's about, same with the cars, creating a safer environment. 
as you said, more and more people are living in cities. How can we make them safer? So are there any other examples in terms of public safety where AI is a huge benefit? Yeah, so let's imagine, for example, a crime scene and, uh, and the attacker in the crime scene is, is running out of, of the place. And thanks to this, that the cities have a lot of sensors mounted to different public places like airports, for example, train stations or the, the intersections themselves. Um, the, the cities are able to actually track the, the attacker and, and make find it faster. Other examples I might have here is like, um, let's, let's think about like the search and rescue mission. Uh, for example, the boat was sinking and uh, the people are in the water. And sometimes you need to scan like a very, very huge uh, terrain uh, to, to find those people. And that's where AI can help you. Because like, if you were to do that alone, it's, it, it, sh it would take you just too much time. And AI can just accelerate that as well. That's awesome. And then I want to, one last thing, and then I'll open it up to, to you guys for questions. With Sin City, this, this product that you've developed, I find it so fascinating. Because right now, the way that, we'll go back to autonomous vehicles, the way that they learn is just through people driving. The machines that are in the cars learn, and that gets, over time, turned into information that we can use. So on a, on a time scale, is it like logarithmic? How many factors is it faster to use something like Sin City versus just having a fleet of cars drive around forever? So it's, it's a few uh, orders of magnitude, actually. Um, if you were to record like the, the traffic data, uh, you would need to probably drive a few billions of hours to find all those um, examples, like Lucy example, for example. There are so, so many more like near-miss scenarios where cars are so close to crashing into each other. And you know, if you would be just driving, it doesn't happen so often. But in Sin City, we can, what we can do is we can create those scenarios and we can simulate this data and you are able to record it from different perspectives and from different sensors. And that, thus, you can have th this data much faster. Oh, that's awesome. So you basically experiment with many different variables. Yeah. That's incredible. So now, thank you so much. I'm going to open it up to you all if anyone has any questions. If you do, I'll run to you with a microphone and we'll be very close to I can do that for you. Oh, or Vach, you take all the fun from me. How dare you? Yes? Uh, what's the highest resolution your cameras go up to these days? So he asked, what's the highest resolution that you can capture? Um, so different sensors allow you to, to create different resolutions and the highest we actually got and it's due to hardware limitations and GPU power uh, is right now the, the 4K and 8K resolution for RGB and thermal cameras but of course uh, if we want to increase that we, we just didn't have uh, the client that, that was asking for that it's all possible as well so there is probably not that much of a limitation in terms of re uh, resolution uh, does the resolution help with the a AR stuff? It, the higher resolution, would it help you? So, that, that's a good question. Uh, is the higher resolution helping with uh, training AI, right? It, it, so, actually, for AI algorithms to really work well, they need to downsample the data to a very small resolution. That's why having very high resolution isn't always uh, a good thing. So, you know, if we are talking about 8K resolutions, AI algorithms cannot work on such, such big data. They are downsampling it to like 300 pixels by 200 pixels. So, yeah. Well, I guess so, sorry, just one thing with that, because I'm that's so curious, because I guess we're, our understanding of resolution is that the more resolution, the easier it is for us to see. But whereas a computer or AI doesn't need to see the way that we see and interprets information differently. Yeah. So resolution, I guess, isn't so much as a factor as it is for us. Well, you know, if, if the resolution is too low, actually, you know, people where normally they would be like this, this size, there could be just two or three pixels. So AI could not actually see a person there to classify. So the resolution also needs to be at least at some, some uh, factor, some good uh, size. So we're not going to be able to do one pixel by one pixel. Sorry? We're not going to do one pixel by one pixel? No, no. I mean, it's, it's a dot. It, or there's no dot. <laughs> we did it. It's, it's a guessing. It could be a cow, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I think there was another one. Will, will your system be able to keep up? It said on the screen there a minute ago that the population is getting more and more and more to the big city areas. Will your system be able to just keep expanding and, and taking care of it? So the, the question was to the, the slide before us. As the population in cities keeps growing and growing, can the system that you're designing scale? Um, so, 
because we are more based on specific uh, parts of the world, it's not that we are building the whole city, like, like the whole um, world that we have here. And thus, we are allowing our system to put different variables of, so for example, traffic uh, densities. So we are able to model that, but it's not that we are building like those hundreds of kilometers of, of actual terrain that is working all together. We are more focusing on smaller parts and smaller scenes. That's why this kind of problem isn't actually a problem here. So I guess just I'm envisioning in my head, it's, it's more like data sets. Certain yeah. data sets that if we just zoom out, if we did all these data sets, we zoom out, then we get the full picture of a city. But it's yeah. just these individual data sets that are doing it, as I understand it. Yeah, and like it's important to understand that like us just focusing on like two kilometers of terrain is, is good enough because we can take this two kilometers that is already working and kind of randomize things there, like buildings, like trees, and it becomes like another two square kilometer and another two square kilometer. And with one click of a button, we can generate like thousands of different environments that doesn't need to necessarily be like hundreds of kilometers wide. We also have like the endless runner uh, example where the car can just drive through like different environments endlessly and they are being generated around. But we don't need to actually have like hundreds of kilometers of data in our GPU because this is, this is impossible to, to operate with. Yeah, it's like building blocks. You yeah. don't need the entire carpet in the living room, you just need one little area and you can just break something down, build something up, break it down, build something up again. Yeah, and this is like how our cities are right now built. We have like different puzzles that we are putting together and they are generating so much, so many like variable environments that you have so many possibilities to record so different data and, and AI actually needs like this, this variance and it's called entropy actually in, in AI terms.